Hi hey everyone, Gareth from Health Counselling and Disability Services. We're here today to talk about uh, procrastination. In fact, we are going to make a series of videos uh, on procrastination. Uh, it's a topic that most students uh, and staff, to be honest, will encounter at some point in time. And it's uh, the kind of issue that can really uh, get in the way of having a good student experience and uh, doing good work. So what we're going to cover in this video today is what is procrastination, what are the different ways that people procrastinate, why you should try to get on top of procrastination, and where to start if you think procrastination is a problem for you. So first, what is procrastination? So procrastination is delaying action on something that needs to be done, despite expecting to be worse off, and in most cases, often being worse off. Now procrastination is hugely common. So we're talking 70 to 80% of people will report procrastinating on something in their lives. Maybe it's something they need to do around the house or someone they need to get back to, or in our case, our work or our studies. But despite the fact that it's very common, it can also be very disruptive. Now, in terms of what procrastination looks like from a student perspective, we tend to see these kinds of things. So putting off assignments to the last minute, uh, putting off exam revision to the last minute, failing to note down important due dates of assignments, avoiding lectures uh, but then not catching up with them online, uh, failing to get back to lecturers and tutors about assignments, and then the final one, even if things are starting to actually go badly, um, students then put off contacting support services like students uh, learning support or us at health counselling when in need. Now, we will expand in a future video uh, why it is that people procrastinate. We've got a good one planned in which we dig into the psychology of procrastination. Um, but at this point, all you need to know is that procrastination is a type of avoidance and humans are very gifted at avoidance. Um, and there's a good reason for that. So I'm here and you're here because our ancestors uh, were very good at avoiding the things that could have hurt them. So avoiding dangerous people, avoiding dangerous animals, avoiding dangerous plants, avoiding dangerous situations. But sometimes we get too good at it and we end up avoiding things that we should be doing or things that would make our lives better. So we avoid, for example, getting more exercise or we avoid eating well. Or in the case of what we're talking about here today, we avoid our study or our work. Stuff that's hugely valuable for us and will make our future better. Um, but for some reason we decide to, to put it aside or leave it till the last minute. Now I've been at Flinders for a while, uh, both as a student and as a staff member, and I have heard and I have used many, many excuses or justifications for procrastination. And what we're going to do now is run through some of the most common ones that we hear and the common ones that, that we see. Um, and as we go through this list, you might find that there are ones that you think you do. You might go, yep, that's totally me. I do that one all the time. Now, we're not showing you these to make you feel guilty or ashamed. Um, we're actually showing you these so you can get a bit of a sense of what your own personal procrastination profile is. And we'll be able to use that when we talk later about what kind of assistance might be relevant for you. So, when we uh, have something that we need to do, like an assignment or a piece of work, that we don't really want to do and we're not doing it, then we start to feel a bit guilty or a bit ashamed. And we don't like to feel guilty or ashamed, so we try and distract ourselves from those feelings. And one of the things we can do is immerse ourselves in fun and enjoyable activities. So some of the most common uh, means by which people procrastinate are things like Netflix, uh, gaming, uh, eating, listening to music, socialising and shopping. And really what these activities do is they take our minds off the fact that we're not working on what we should be. Because we also experience uh, kind of guilt and shame when we're not working on what we should do, we often then procrastinate using activities that actually make us feel better about ourselves. So we might clean the house, we might do some physical activity, we might help a friend in need, work in the garden, we might even go so far as to do some volunteering or some other professional development. And these are all good activities, don't get me wrong, I want you to engage in these. But if we're doing these to avoid dealing with the fact that we're not actually doing the work we need to do, then we call that a substitute achievement rather than a primary achievement. The other thing that we do when we procrastinate is we come up with excuses or justifications for why we're not working on what we should be. Uh, definitely some of the most common involve what we call fusing with our emotional or physical state. So we say, well, I'm not working on this assignment because I'm too tired or I'm too stressed, or I'm not motivated, or I'm all out of energy, or I don't feel like it. 
And we kind of use how we're feeling as an excuse for not having to do what it is we're supposed to. The problem is we're always going to have to be doing some of our work when we're not actually feeling that great. And the more we use this excuse, the more we kind of limit the, the opportunities to work on the basis of how we're feeling at the time. Another type of thinking or kind of justification that we come across a lot is this idea that um, I'll be way smarter and more motivated and more capable tomorrow or next week or the week after. So we sort of have this fairy tale that our future version of ourself is much better and smarter and more interested in this assignment than the current version of ourselves. Um, and the problem is our future self is actually rarely more capable, uh, more competent, more interested uh, than your current version and who you are and how you feel right now. And in fact, all you're doing is diddling your future self because you're giving them less time to actually get the assignment done or the revision done. Sometimes um, we, just, uh, we just bring out our inner rebellious child, right? So we, and this is essentially the equivalent of an adult tantrum. So we decide that we don't want to do the work, we're not interested in it, it's no fun, uh, we scrunch up our face, we hold our breath, we put our arms up and we just refuse to budge. And to us at the time it seems like a legitimate excuse, but really from anyone watching from the outside it is, as I said, basically just an adult tantrum. So those are some of the more kind of obvious ways that we procrastinate, but there are also some more subtle ways that we procrastinate. I've got certain preferences in the way I work. So I like to do most of my work in the morning. Um, I certainly like to do the more complex work in the morning. And there are certain places I enjoy working more. I enjoy working from home, obviously, but I also enjoy working from my office. But it's not always the case that those conditions can be exactly right. Um, and I may have to do work in places I'm not interested in. I may have to do uh, work uh, during times of the day that I'm not as productive. But what people do sometimes is they turn their preferences into rules and then they apply those rules to whether or not they should or should not be studying now. So people who report feeling as though they're fresher and, and, and more capable in the morning might end up turning that into a rule which is I can only study in the morning. Or people who really enjoy working at their desk might turn that into a rule that I can't work at the library, I can't get anything done um, whilst I'm not at home. And as you can imagine, as you start to assemble more and more of these rules, you really limit the number of situations where you can effectively study. This is one I do all the time, um, so I feel uh, sorry for you if this is one you also do, but uh, one of the more subtle ways we procrastinate is we look for and say yes to new projects. So the creativity and the opportunity and the novelty of a new project is pretty much always more exciting and engaging than the hard work that is associated with an existing project. So you've got an assignment open, you're looking at it, you've been looking at it for the last week or so, you're pretty bored by it, uh, you really don't want to work on it, and then you notice an opportunity elsewhere or someone sends you an email or asks you a question and suddenly you've got a new project. Perhaps you're starting a podcast or you start a blog or you open a new social media channel. The problem with this approach is um, you end up being overcommitted. You say yes to so many new projects and suddenly they become then the things that you're procrastinating on later. Multitasking, um, everyone says they can do it, no one can. Um, really the, the, the way this looks from a procrastination perspective is we sit down, we open up the assignment that we're supposed to work on, but then we also open up another hundred tabs, we open up our social media, we open up a few chat apps, we turn our mobile on, uh, we might even open two or three more assignments, um, and then we might even open our email up just to complete the list. And then for the next couple of hours, we, we flit our attention between those. Um, and we get to the end of a couple of hours and we think we've done some really good work, but in fact we may have only spent 5, 10, 15 minutes on the assignment that we actually had to. So what we've been doing is procrastinating or putting off the work we have to by attempting to do multiple things at the same time and make us keep, uh, make us feel as though we're constantly busy. And then finally, and we'll make some separate videos on the topic of uh, perfectionism, but uh, there is a collision often between uh, the experience of perfectionism and the experience of procrastination. Um, perfectionism, just very quickly, um, those who are perfectionists uh, tend to report very, very high, if not unrealistic standards for what they need to achieve, and then constantly berate themselves and criticise themselves when they aren't able to achieve those standards. And for some perfectionists, the standards they set are so high and so beyond what they think they're capable of 
that it ultimately leads to procrastination because they say to themselves, I'm not going to do this project if I can't do it perfectly. There's no point doing it if I can't do it at all. So they keep putting assignments off because they never feel like they're going to be at a point where they can do it at the level of quality that they want. Okay, so why should you try and get on top of procrastination? So the primary reason is that if you're putting assignments off and doing them at the last minute, if you're only uh, preparing for exams, you know, the day or two before, it means that your performance and your grades aren't really a reflection of your ability, they're more a reflection of just how little time you allocated to doing your work. And it would be a real shame to get to the end of your degree and for your grades not to actually reflect your ability and capacity, but simply to be a reflection of how much you procrastinated over that time. So really one of the primary reasons to get on top of it is so that your grades at university reflect the ability you have. But we also know that there's a whole bunch of other negative things that come along with procrastination. So when we see students who report high levels of procrastination, they also report high levels of stress, sleep problems, fatigue and exhaustion, illness, anxiety. They tend to be very angry um, at themselves and feel a lot of shame about not getting their work done. They want to do these assignments, they want to do well, but they get frustrated at the fact they continually procrastinate. And then overall, their study experience starts to become really aversive and they become dissatisfied with their degree, dissatisfied with being at university, and they're more likely to maybe drop out and quit at that point in time. So, does this sound like you? So we've covered the kind of different ways that people procrastinate, the many creative ways that people um, justify that procrastination, and some of the negative impacts of, of procrastination. And if having listened to that, you think, okay, this does sound a little bit like me, um, don't be scared. There are things that you can actually do about it. So if you found this video, you pretty much already know about the Student Learning Support Service. If you don't feel as though you're getting what you need from the kind of self-help materials, then book in to see maybe a, a, an academic advisor at the Learning Lounge. If, you, uh, if your degree involves a lot of assignments, like written assignments, essays and stuff, consider using the Studiosity service. Now, it could be the case that you don't think it's really study skills that are getting in the way um, or causing your procrastination. It might be something else going on in your life or you're not quite sure. In which case, you might want to consider counselling, um, book an appointment to talk to one of the, the Flinders University counsellors. They can help you understand maybe what are the dynamics of your procrastination, the unique dynamics for you. If you have a chronic illness or a chronic health condition and you think that might be the thing that is getting in the way of you, you, you working in a timely way on your, your study, then make an appointment to see one of the disability advisors. Uh, if you're super keen, you can join me um, in the Studyology program. It's a five by two hour sessions uh, program in which we really dig in on the psychological dynamics of procrastination and look at strategies to tackle that. And we also have, uh, courtesy of the, the CCI in Western Australia, a uh, procrastination workbook. Um, it's a self-guided workbook. It'll take you through the whole process of understanding what procrastination is. Um, and then looking at the different kind of ways that you can tackle it from the really practical study strategies through to the understanding what kind of thoughts and beliefs and feelings are driving your procrastination. So that's all we've got for this particular video. Um, if you found this stuff interesting or we've just piqued your interest, uh, make sure to look out for additional videos that we're going to be preparing on procrastination. Uh, in the next one, for example, we're really going to dig into what uh, the psychological dynamics are that drive procrastination and then we'll definitely get into what are the different things you can do to get on top of it. Until then, uh, have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon.